It's a fundamental aspect of, of human behavior to look for patterns and to track patterns. And when we think about perceptions of, of risk and business perceptions of different kinds of risk, it's no exception. And uh, one of the uh, sources that tends to be looked at pretty carefully is the global risk report that is put out by uh, World Economic Forum every year. And this is basically a survey of uh, business experts uh, writ large on what they perceive as the leading business risks. And so we've pulled this together uh, in terms of the last 10 years of work on this uh, to help provide sort of a trending story analysis and to help interpret what some of these uh, conclusions really mean. Because it turns out that you have to be pretty careful in interpreting these, uh, these reports. Let me jump over into the climate web just to uh, get into a little more depth. So the WF does put out these annual risk reports. Uh, you hear a lot about how climate change is ranking very high and in fact was the top risk variable in 2016. It, it, it's tricky uh, because you know how, what are people thinking about climate change? What is the scenario that they are using for thinking about climate change? When you have extreme events as, as one variable and climate change as another variable, what does that really mean since extreme events can clearly be linked to climate change? So these are some of the tricky issues that come up in interpreting the results. So you've got to be careful in interpreting the results partially because it, it's very hard to know who's really responding to these surveys, what their real level of uh, expertise is. And uh, so I'm just going to jump into showing you in the climate web how you can dig uh, deeper into this. So we have the uh, global risk reports. On the one hand, we have the risk reports themselves going all the way back to 2006. We have the PDFs in most cases that you can uh, that you can grab and you can go in and, and, and look at just some of the key uh, information tables graphics that we've pulled out of these uh, reports. Obviously we've had a focus on on climate change in looking at it and it's interesting to see how how people were talking about this back in 2006 uh, for example in terms of these uh, reports. But this goes all the way up through 2000. Uh, 16 and and you can find some really interesting graphics the world protest intensity for example graphic that is in the 2016 report and if you go over in this case 2016 uh, every year they provide a comparison so here's the evolving risk uh, impacts the impacts not the likelihoods I'll show you that in a second but if you look at this graphic and you look at 2016 you'll see that the failure of climate change mitigation and adaptation is the top global risk in terms of impact for 2016, as opposed to water crises in 2015, which obviously could have a climate link in their own right, uh, whereas uh, failure of climate change mitigation and adaptation in 2015 was the fifth ranked risk and didn't show up at all in 2014, but climate change showed up in 2014. So it, it does get very confusing as to what exactly people mean over time with some of these variables. But let me just then also show you the, uh, the likelihood. So as opposed to the impacts, you know, what are the, the most important from a likelihood perspective? And so for 2016, you have large scale involuntary migration, which is probably referring to the Syrian and European uh, crises. Then you have extreme weather events. Uh, then you have failure of climate change mitigation adaptation. Then you have major natural catastrophes. Well, to the extent that extreme weather events tend to be major natural catastrophes, uh, it again, uh, a bit of confusion here and, and ambiguity. So uh, be careful in interpreting uh, some of these conclusions when, when you hear them in the uh, in the news now if we go back up here to the global risk reports you can also go down into the global risk graphics and here we've simply pulled together a few of the key graphics every year so you can that you can scroll over uh, and just see how risk was being sort of visualized and presented from 
year to year. Now, in some years, they did some really interesting things. In 2013, for example, there, there are graphics in there uh, juxtaposing how uh, different ages of respondents affected risk assessments, how different uh, uh, expertise sources impacted the risk assessments, and even how different genders impacted the risk assessments. Which, the, this kind of information I find actually very interesting, and you found uh, that in the 2013 report and the 2014 report, but it's disappeared since then. So, so there's not full consistency in terms of the kinds of information being uh, tracked. So there are no clear conclusions here uh, in terms of business risk perceptions over time, but, but it is a story that gets a lot of attention every year, uh, a lot of news reports written about it every year. And so uh, we thought it was useful uh, putting it into a trending story here in the climate web and providing a lot more information for you to dig into if you uh, wish to do so.